For the midterm, so what is on the line? Balance of power. One Williams, Fox News political analyst, co-host of the Five, Max Lapp, former White House political director and chairman of the American Conservative Union. One in a million and mad, mad. Good Friday to both of you, <laughs> gentlemen. Why is this race three points, Matt? President Trump won here a year and a half yep. ago with 20 points in southwestern PA. What's up? You know, Bill, it's not always easy to be on the screen with someone who's younger and more handsome, right? So you got a little bit of a uh, Democratic candidate who is a young, cuts a nice figure, and, I you were and look, and he's running. Juan. I was kind of talking about. <laughs> I but, know you were thinking that, Williams. Keep going. I Matt. was talking about one of you. So the uh, so then the uh, and he's separating himself very effectively from. The real reason, Bill, is the Republican incumbent was a pro-life uh, Republican who spoke at the Right to Life March and at the same time was urging a girlfriend uh, to end a pregnancy. And that just, that hypocrisy stinks. And I think there are a lot of voters that are still smarting from the audacity of that incumbent. And that's a big scandal. And unfortunately, Republicans have to bear under that. But they're coming home. And I believe uh, we're going to win this race in a cloud of dust at the end of the day. Okay. Now, Juan, you got a couple of things working against you right now. These economic numbers are good. They came out at 830. Yeah. You got the tariff issue that would likely looked upon pretty favorably in southwestern PA. Um, and you've, you've got a president that will be there tomorrow. It'll be his second visit to this district. This is Pennsylvania 18, which is suburban Pittsburgh, all the way out to the West Virginia line, Bill. But I think the reason this is a three-point race is not the things that you just cited. I think, in fact, the, the presence of so many union people, and apparently those are union people who reacted well to Donald Trump and gave him that, you know, plus 20 in the 2016 presidential race, those people are now looking and saying, hey, you know, Where's the beef? You know, where are the deliverables? I mean, if you look at their opportunities, they're not seeing any radical changes. Matt talked about they had a scandal there in that area on the very issue that you see Rick Saccone running so heavily on. He's constantly talking about abortion. Uh, and then you have, in addition, the RNC plus other outside Republican groups throwing tremendous money in seven times what the Democrats are, so you, but you, you have a candidate a, in Connor Lamb who is a yeah. former Marine and former a former Marine. prosecutor. Right. Uh, once a Marine, always a Marine. Never right, former. that's right. Um, and Juan, you're making the case it's more about social issues, and we'll see whether or not that's the case. But well, I think that also Connor Lamb is, as Matt was saying, is, I mean, as a former Marine, as a former prosecutor, Marine. someone who says he's not voting with Nancy Pelosi, it's hard to demean a, him in the way think, uh, you know, has been previously done okay. to Democrats. Go ahead, Matt. The, the Democrat is a, look, he is, he is a smart guy for trying yeah. to separate himself from Nancy Pelosi and the Washington Democrats. Bill, what I would disagree with Juan on is the fact that this is actually, it's difficult for a president, even when he's popular in a district and his decision on tariffs is wildly popular in this district and this district is doing better economically, even when a president is popular, you can't always transfer that easily to the, to the, to the, to the candidate running for Congress. And what we got to understand as we go to November elections, there's going to be all this coverage from the left wing folks in the media saying, you know, this, the Republicans are going to get killed, the Republicans are going to get killed. It's going to come down to individual candidates, the races they run, the quality of those candidates. Donald Trump and Mike Pence are going to do everything they can, along with the speaker and the majority leader, to make sure that they've got all the assets they need. But in the end of the day, these Republican candidates are going to have to stand up and make the argument and win the race. Uh, I think it's interesting his position on Nancy Pelosi. He, he's, yeah. he, he says he wouldn't vote for her as House no. Speaker if the Democrats. Smart, good politics. Majority. Last point on that, Juan. We're going to hop. No, I think that what you see here is a guy who's saying he's more conservative than the Democratic leadership, and it's unfair to tie him to it. And similarly, where Republicans have been pushing, for example, the tax cut, here comes Joe Biden campaigning for uh, Connor Lamb saying, hey, this tax cut was for the rich. And I don't think the Republicans anticipated that that message would resonate here and outside we Pittsburgh. We are the reading tea leaves from now until November. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Bill, Bill, we're going to win. Yeah. We're going to win. Okay. All right, Juan, you want to? Come on, well, I, I think Connor Lamb is a great candidate. And I, I mean, it's not even, as I said, the Republicans are worried about Trump here. Connor Lamb is worried about the people of Pennsylvania. Does Lamb, we're going to win. Does Lamb win or not, Juan? Oh, I think this, yeah. I, I, it's close race, as you know. But I would <laughs> say on. at this point, the momentum is with the Democrats. We'll play this on Wednesday morning. <laughs> okay. Not one after of, this weekend. One of you will win. Thank you.